Uh, I've been a passing coach forever. 2000 came in, they got hired by Mike Work, and we ran the run to shoot. And we were a uh, basically, you know, four wide receiver team throw the ball around. And then 2000, uh, we started flirting with the shotgun because that's when, uh, if you remember the history, is when Florida couldn't beat Florida State under center, and then they went to the shotgun and, and whooped them up, and then you know went to won the national championship. So we went to the shotgun, and it was about the same year that the Northwestern came out and was running the ball from the shotgun all the time. And so when we went to that, we went with our four wide, and I had a quarterback who could actually. Uh, run so we went our four wide receivers and I had a real fullback playing in the running back spot and then we decided to the quarterback and went straight ahead uh, and I'm like well we and we ran power eye earlier in the year in the time so I'm like how are we gonna run power eye out of this four wide and so I said let's just bring in uh, you know bring the receivers in and put another guy in the backfield and we'll run the power eye without the quarterback and a team that we played in our league had been playing uh, Lou Stewart, who was one of the original coaches at uh, Loyola when Grady was a, was a tailback there in '62, and he was running single wing at La, uh, LaSalle, and so I was amazed because you know and this is like 1997 was the first time I seen it. You know, no one's ever seen single wing back then, and then, you know I, I started playing football in uh, the late '70s, played through the '80s. And I didn't, you know, other than if they showed it on an NFL thing, I didn't know what the single wing was at, at all. And so started studying that, and I said, hey, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll run this. And so I, we put it in uh, in the midseason in 2001, and one of my uh, moms, her son was, was one of the kids that came in and kind of had a bunch of fullback types, and we put them in the backfield. And she goes, put that, run that formation, you run all those fat kids in. And so that's why we said so we're going to call this FAT because I didn't have a name for the formation. And so we came out running uh, FAT and uh, we practiced it and you know it was just one of those things maybe we'll put this in. Well we're playing uh, Campbell Hall and with two minutes left in the game we are down by 19 points and they're singing the Na 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 song and you know singing away and so we went to FAT and which is funny, it's like with two minute game, you're thinking you're not going to go into a run game. But we went and just pounded them with the single wing, uh, scored a touchdown, two point conversion, got down to about a minute left of the game, threw a pass, scored a touchdown, two point conversion, kicked the onside kick, got it, and uh, kicked a field goal to tie the game. 1919, refs ran off the field, and so we ended up getting a tie that we didn't have an overtime. Uh, so we were just like, oh my gosh, this thing might work. And so we uh, put it in. The, that, that was that was game uh, game eight. Ran it nine uh, game nine and ten, and in the playoffs. And then the next year came out, and, and we still did our four wide, and then we shifted into the single wing. Uh, for, uh, at that point, that's when I found the Delphi forums and everybody at the single wing and started listening uh, to you know what they were saying. And, and pretty much it was just a, it was a double tight uh, balanced single wing, and all we ran. <coughs> The, uh, the first year, that the three game season, all we ran was blast and sweep. Uh, then we put the power play in, put the counter plays in in the pass, and uh, ran that with our four wide. Then the uh, we started running the jet sweep with that, and so pretty much I'll just show you quick on this. And this is. 2004, uh, you know, we were just a, a basic four wide pass team, kind of, we've had quarterbacks, had wide receivers, you know, kind of just threw the ball, and uh, you know, that type of stuff, so, we, you know, then, We 
started running more uh, of the jet sweep out of it and uh, didn't have a quarterback, so we stopped throwing the ball as much. And then we just ran, you know, basic dual motion, double tight, kind of flexed them. You know, then the play's off it. fake the jet sweep, then the trap play. So essentially like Ted was showing us with that power play, we just ran a trap play out of it and get to the history. So then the next year we came back after that team and didn't have, a, we had a quarterback but we didn't, we couldn't throw the ball to save our life. And we started off the season 0-5 and, and we actually, this was the team we thought was going to be very good because I had all my skill kits back. I had three running backs back, I had the quarterback back, I had the receiver, I had defensive guys, and so he did all the things that you know you're going to bust your butt. So we we had we had uh, we were going six days a week in the off season. We were doing weightlifting. We were doing we had speed trainers here. We were having full practices, uh, camp type things. We'd, we'd bring in this guy who, uh, you know, was a, uh, a coach, and he would basically run practice for us. So we were getting past the CIF rules. And, you know, we had uh, team bonding once a month parties, and we were doing, I mean, everything possible. We went on trips, had 150 passing league games during the summer, went to everything. I mean, just when you, you know, you know that's your team, and you went for it. And then we opened up the game against Riverside Christian and just got pounded. And then the next game they got they lost they got and uh, it was one of those where they were just beaten to submission and so it's like week four week five and we're doing everything wrong it's like the punter you know putting out of the end zone takes a knee in the end zone for a safety and, you know just every possible thing you could think happens going wrong and you can see it in the, in the kids' eyes I mean these are like three year starters they're just like well, we don't know what the heck we're going to do coach we're, we're done and so. Like most of uh, these talks, we're in a bad situation. So week five, we, we put in the uh, the IBAC toss play or double double wing, and <coughs> one of the biggest issues we had on that team is they were great athletes, but we were you know especially in high school we were 170 pounds across the line. Uh, I had five linemen, you know, all at 170, 175 pounds. They're basically linebackers, <coughs> and we couldn't block anybody, and so we went to the, the 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 double wing because we thought we could double team anybody bigger, and then we could pull more people around and get more people to point attack, and that's how we were going to get through the other teams that were stopping us. And so we went to an eye back thing. And the reason I went eye back over double wing is I had one kid that was really good versus the other kid. And so I said, I, I'm going to give him all the carries. And so in the, the last five games of the season, he ended up rushing for 1,100 yards. Uh,
One of the things, too, is that was the other one. Our quarterback, fullback, tailback, all those guys were actually bigger than, than the linemen in front of them. is that we always want a double team, so I, I, uh, I'm still amazed that uh, I go in the Delta forums and the God and the Sab and the TK and all this stuff, and I'm not that smart to get that down, but basically what we talk about, and we do a lot of just scheming, uh, the biggest rule is, is that the center is going to protect the backside gap. Uh, but he doesn't have to go there unless, this is all the basic toss play too, he doesn't have to go there unless there's a body there. So if a backer's blitzing or if somebody's lining up there, uh, he doesn't have to go there. If there's nobody there that's threatening it right now, then he's going to join the double team with the guard. And we're always looking to double team everybody. Front side tackle, same deal. He's got to protect his inside gap, but he's going to join the double team with the tight end. And so we're looking to get some type of double team. Backside guy is going to do the shoe shine block, and all he's done, his job is just to basically cover for the tackle. That kid pissed me off the shooters. He sat there and didn't make that block, and that guy kept making the tackle. And he didn't tell me the entire game. And he sat there, and you could watch him in the film going like this, like, oh, crap, because he wouldn't go down and cut the kid. And they, I was like, who the hell's been in that block? And I'm yelling and I'm getting mad at the center because I think it's somebody coming through this gap. And the whole time it was him. And he just sat there and I was like, serious, are you going to not tell me that you're not doing it in the game? So, but he just, yeah, it was one of those things. Kid knew he was screwing up and wasn't going to do anything to help us. It was, and it was one of the, the games we ended up uh, losing 14-7 because we couldn't get the, uh, the offense going. Backside's going to pull. They're basically, he's looking to pull inside, he's looking to pull through. Fullback's going to banana block and kick out. And I don't want to, once you start pulling all these guys in, you get kind of messed up. So if, if I do this, this means they're pulling. And then the tailback takes the steps, runs off, tackle off, I the set, uh, quarterback. quarterback turns, pivots, pitches, and then he runs through leading. Usually, if you get a decent quarterback and he knows what he's doing, he can make the block and spring the play. But if he just runs through, he gets in the way. And then, so that's pretty much the, the power blocking. And so, and that's, just, that's, you know, that's a typical way every, you know, double, uh, double wing team runs this play. Uh, <coughs> you know, we've had... One of the problems we had the first year running this was the teams got smart and just said, you know, we're going to put a guy in the B and a guy in the C, and then somebody out there. And so what ended up happening when, you know, we did our, you know, he might, I don't know where he went, but they would basically get these two to double team. And this guy had to make a block by himself. And so the first year, that was like, he wasn't that great of a blocker. He was, you know, he was basically a wide receiver down there. So the big thing I did this year is I finally got one of the big kids to finally come back out. And I put him in that spot. And I said, please put somebody there. Because if we're going to have a single block, I'm going to have it. Uh, I was watching uh, Dominguez High School who runs this. 
against Notre Dame in the uh, championship game probably about two, three years ago. And they had this tight end, and this kid was 6'6", 350 pounds. He was the biggest kid on the line, and he was playing tight end. Didn't go out for any passes. And so I was talking with Keith Donerson about it, and he said, yeah, we, we want to have the tight end be our best blocker. And then I kind of remember from the early 90s when Wisconsin ran the double tight zone play with, uh, who was the big running back? Ron Dane. Huh? Ron Dane. Ron Dane. They had two tackles, and they put 95 on them. They never went out for a pass, and they were out there, so they basically had seven linemen. And, uh, you know, their whole passing game, and if they, if they did want to pass, they stuck one tight end, real tight end in. And so I, so I put my best kid right here, and then put two decent kids here, and then these were my two real small ones who actually pulled. And so we could run it left, we could run it right. Uh, we predominantly like to run it right. Uh, that was the one good thing I liked. You know, his advantage of the eye over the double wing is this kid always ran the ball, and we could go left and right with the same kid. Uh, so that was the one big play. Then we, you know, we had the, we had the trap. Uh, we ran wedge with the quarterback. Uh, just did it on first sound. Uh, for you single wing wedge purists, let me give you a. A very uh, different version of the wedge. Got it from Harry Welch, who's now the Santa Margarita coach. Because uh, in his office, they've been running for 100 years, they ran the wedge. And so I'm like, okay, you know, we talked about getting hip to hip, and center's got to you know, lead it, and everybody's going to push him and go, just, you know, just straight from the, the book. And his is, you know, so if he was running against this one, he automatically, he said, he's just going to stand him up, and he says, he's not going to make the play. And these two are automatically going here, and as long as they get an inside thing, they're going here. He actually runs his wedge second level and doesn't care about the down lineman and basically wants his guy to wedge and then pop out here. And I thought that was like really different that he was getting people up to the second level and then instead of just trying to get somebody and push them and going. Uh, so we essentially did the same thing. And then because we, you know, we were already practicing shoe shining blocks, they just shoe shine them. Quarterback, it was on, it was on touch, or first down, and he would basically hit it and go. And then uh, the the, uh, the fullback's job was to be the pusher, to be the the Reggie Bush, and the tailback took off that way, just to try to drag somebody that way. And that's how that's how we ran we ran our wedge. It was it was just it was a little different than normal, you know, because I mean you, you take your time making the wall and you shove that thing and, and what it did do is that if you got a nose guard who is some reading you, it doesn't matter because you're you're off automatically going. The one thing I had to do with this kid is he always had to go left. Because I had to give him something because he could when I when he make a decision he'd run straight ahead. And so, always go left, so we end up running it left every time. Uh, when we got against a, uh, a 40 type team, we did the exact same thing. But now he became the point, so he just hit him. And then they got upfield. He didn't have to cut anybody, so he got upfield. And then because we knew we probably couldn't get that guy, we, we got him inside, and then the tackle became the, the shoe shot. And that's all we did to change the wedge against a 42. But it was still, and then he just actually took it a gap wider and ran right there. Then the last play in the, that we had is that we had ran a reverse to him when we actually started bringing him in, and then we just ran the counter play, the spin counter where you fake the thing, and then run counter. And so 
our plays were toss, and we actually went with the words because numbers confused them. And so it was toss right, toss left, counter left, counter right, trap right, trap left, wedge. And uh, that was pretty much, you know, the, the offense. So getting to about, now I've got back to the history, I'll get to the, the, what, where we went to. So going into the, uh, a game, we didn't have a, uh, the starting quarterback started having concussion problems. And so he was out. He was out because he had his concussion and he was out for seven days. In the game before, the backup quarterback, uh, who was the tight end, one of the tight ends, uh, broke his finger catching passes in the warm-up. So, and he's, uh, he's a, I don't want to call it a, uh, he's a renaissance man. A gentle soul. Yeah, he's a football player, he's my kicker. He's the lead in the play, lead in the choir, leads the worship team. Uh, he's an AP class. I mean, he does everything. Boy, Boy Scouts. Yeah, he's Tebow. But Tebow's a football player. <laughs> he's, he's a great kid, and he's actually one of my great leaders. But if it comes down to a conflict between choir and football, I don't know where he's going to go. Uh, if the Boy Scout jamboree's coming up, he's not coming to football. That, you know, I mean, it's one of those things. He's, it's not, and so he's got a broken finger, and he's taking himself out. And I, and I had to uh, beg with his dad. No, I need him to play, because I don't have a quarterback. And so I didn't find we, the game was on Friday, and I didn't find out until Thursday that he was actually going to play in the game. And it is, and his hand was, it was, and the great thing was, it wasn't his throwing hand; it was his other hand. And and to all. Honesty, his finger was jacked up pretty bad. I mean, it was, it was, I wouldn't want to feel that pain. It, it was pretty bad. And so we went into the game, okay, we might not have a quarterback. And so instead of actually trying to teach somebody quarterback, I go, we're going to run the double wing plays, but we're going to run it out of Wildcat. And so my first thing was is that he's out. And I go, so let's move him out and make him the jet sweeper. And I go, he's in the way, so let's offset him into a blocking back position, and he can run all his plays. Uh, we didn't run the trap because this guy had terrible hands, and the center, for whatever reason, doesn't know that he has to hike the ball really light this way compared to this way. So we practiced it, but we never, never ran it. Then this guy really became useless because... You know, we weren't going to be able to run the counter play off of it too easy. I mean, we could, but so what we ended up doing is taking this guy and moving him out, taking him out and putting another tackle. So we were kind of in an imbalance. So I had, I had a backup tackle there, and so we did that. This year, because we'll, we're going to run this some more this year, I'm going to go back to that like we had before and actually go more of a, a two-way with it. Uh, but so what you see in the film... Essentially, he's another tackle. And then we just run our play. So what we did is that it would be jet, so it would be wildcat right, so they knew what formation they were in. And we'd go jet, which is motion. And then the play would be jet sweep right. And we'd give the play and run the sweep. These guys, I told them just go hit somebody. I didn't care what you did. If it was jet sweep, just go hit somebody. <laughs> His job was to secure the end, and then they all went and hit somebody. And he went and kicked out. So more like. Yeah. And what it, what was really good too is that uh, this was our, our starting tailback and this was our backup tailback and he was actually a smaller, faster, shiftier kid so it really works out well on this spot. Uh, 
So basically, he'd hike the ball, and he'd give him the snap. He'd give him the ball, hand forward. He just had to learn the, the, the basic rules: is you know, look at him in motion. And the thing is, too, when you call the wildcat, they're watching the dolphins do it, and they're thinking, which is one of the great things for us. Is, you know, sometimes there's just thing going around. Oh, you're running the single wing. Don't run that old offense here. You know, or the double wing. You're like, get that crap out of our school. Well, because they they don't see it. Actually, somebody was talking about it earlier. They don't. They're talking about the spread, how the coaches are running spread and. Uh, because they're seeing on, on, on Saturdays and Sundays. Well, if you watch Florida, you watch this. If you watched uh, the Dolphins, you watch this. So they are seeing this on TV, so the kids are pumped. So my tailback's like, and he wants to do just, you know, we usually just, when we ran before, and I teach it, it's like, you know, look at him, and when he looks at you in the face, that tells you to go to motion. When he wants to do the Ronnie Brown, you know, he, come on, let's go. <laughs> and so, he, you know, they got excited about the whole thing. So that was, it was really a great week of practice. Uh, so he looks at him, sends him a motion, and the whole key on the timing of, of the snap is he calls down, set, he goes down, set, go in motion, uh, and when he says go is when this guy gets to the tackle, and you have to practice this timing or it's not going to work on, on, on the sweep, and you want to hike it, so he's running full speed when he gets the ball, and then you just hand the ball off. Uh, if there's any issues on the snap or the handoff, just keep it and, and then run. And so that, then that's the sweep. And then he, his job after he hands it is try to just go opposite, just to you know try to take somebody with him. And so the first play, that's all we added to to the offense was jet sweep right. Then the next, you know, obviously the first thing you did, you know, and then we run it both ways. So you know they flip flop these these two. Uh, would flip flop uh, with him, and we just got to go this side. Now I thought, I go, oh, it's going to tip us off uh, if we're running. Uh, oh, I know what it was. So let me get back to it. Not there. So we took. Uh, and since they usually ended up, you know, moving somebody over here like this, so then the next. Play was run power, so I said you keep acting blocking the end, uh, and he's flexed about three or four yards here. I go, you keep blocking whoever's trying to force the edge here, just like we're running jet sweep. But I don't want you to touch this end when we, we go to power. So he would run, and he would fake his jet sweep. Then we would just go right back to the basic uh, double wing rule. So we've got double team here, got double team here, double team, double team. He's going to go. They're going to pull. He's going to kick out. Because of the, of the speed of the sweep, you really don't have to fake. So he literally caught the ball and ran. So all we lost out of the whole double, out of a, a double wing type play is the quarterback actually leading through. It was the only thing we lost. Uh, but because of the speed motion, we actually got some of these guys out more out of the play. And anybody who normally would be here, obviously the Sam Backer in a 5-3, would be the type that would be running here anyhow. So it was almost like we didn't need the quarterback's play. So we would run jet, so this would be wildcat right, jet, toss right. The point I was trying to get was if we wanted to run jet and run, you know, run toss left, then this, this uh, if I set him off here, kind of maybe sets the key off that, uh, oh, they're going left because the fullback's going left, even though the jet's going this way. So we had, what really worked out fine is that he just stayed here and still made his block that way and went across. And so we were able to go jet and then run toss left. And so pretty much it was just jet, toss right, toss left out of the shotgun. We had the trap play. Uh, we didn't run it. And then the, the only other play we, we, we put in on this is we threw him a corner out. And this kid who was the tailback who couldn't throw, and then he just hucked it up and, and, and got a corner. And that was pretty much the, the entire offense that, that we ran. And then we just messed with the, with the jet sweeps and uh, gave the jet sweeps. We uh, we tossed it, and we pretty much only ran it one or two games. Uh, the quarterback came back, and we went back to the uh, the offense. The, the you know the big problem we have 
with some of these kids that we had that were autistic and stuff is if things change, they flipped out. And uh, so, you know, if I uh, I changed too much on them, they, they kind of they got into a thing. So let me show you some film of. Uh, Yeah, he's he should be at five. He on the when we run our IVAX, they get it at whatever level they need to time up the play. When you run this, were you doing any cut blocks at all? Just the shoe shine. Did you ever? Did, in our, it's becoming more and more prevalent in San Diego when you're running direct snap. This is it. Got to the point where. Um, if you were running direct snap, we were having refs telling us that, uh, and we have high school, you know, we get the San Diego high school refs, you know, at least one of them, and they're saying as soon as the ball is snapped, the uh, free blocking zone is broken down because the ball is out of the zone. And it got to the point where we were in defense, we were running uh, Dave Caesar's wide tackle six and we were bear crawling the A-gaps, and they were telling us our bear crawlers couldn't bear crawl for the same reason, free blocking zone, so you can't go below the waist. So I don't, have you seen that up here at all? Yeah, well, I, no, I go... Look, I got a CIF ref who's a janitor here, so I, I always get to talk with him every day about stuff. And so when that comes up, I'm like, okay, it's, so the, when the ball leaves the leaves uh, the zone is when the, the zone disintegrates, is the way the rules read it. Okay, so if the if the if the zone is three yards on each side of the tackle and a yard deep on each side, well, when the ball's height, it isn't, it hasn't left. It's going to take a full second to get out of that zone. That, that, and so I, I understand they yeah. tell you that. But all you've you got to remember, a lot of these, these reps, they don't know what they're talking about. And if you come back with, you know what you're talking about, and they, they figure out that you know what you're talking about, there are one of two things to do. They're, they're going to be, they're going to, they're going to big lead you and say, oh, okay, screw you, I'm just going to screw you because you're embarrassing me. Or two, they're going to listen to you. Uh, I'm all over these guys all the time. You know, as I learned their procedures. I went to their meetings, you know, and so, when, when the ref comes and he's, you know, because one of the, and the first thing, and it helps teach your assistant coaches, if you know what ref's supposed to call what, and so when something's not getting called, uh, you know which one, which ref should be calling that, and two, you know which ref, uh, you know, for example here, I'll give you a great example. Uh, Alright, it's not going to show me. So, your defensive end is getting held by the left tackle. <coughs> All right, well, the sideline guys aren't in charge of watching that. Their job is to watch up and down the field and have anything to do with out of bounds and, and basically spot in the field. So they're not watching your defensive end get held by a tackle. The backfield judge, the white guy, his job is, the white hat's supposed to, he, his job is to watch anything in the middle, center, on the snap, and anything to protect the quarterback. So he's literally watching the quarterback the entire time. The guy behind the umpire, his job is to watch the interior line. Well, he's not going to watch the outside flanks. He's only going to watch the interior three. So if your guards or centers are holding, he's going to watch. And then the last guy's in the back. So literally, your left tackle can hold the defensive end and get away with it every play. Unless he literally tackles him or does something, or they're looking for it, like when the coach goes, hey, they're holding my end. And so it's one of those type of things, if you just come in and go, okay, you know, the guy that should be watching that is the umpire back here. Watch the tackle, put watch in the center, because because the white hat's got that job, and watch the tackle. He's being held. He's holding my defensive end, and then that's but that's the type of thing. If but if you go, oh, they're holding my end. They're holding my end. You know, I mean, they're holding. Yeah, they don't. Okay, so they're holding their end because five refs there, 
only one guy's supposed to be watching that spot. The other four don't even hear that you're saying that. And then the guy you're yelling at to is usually the guy on your sideline. He has nothing, to, anything. And so if you get to the point where you can do that, you can you can change them on that. And you know you're always going to find one who's going to be like pissed and that you know more than him. But you've got to go come out at their level. It's like wait a minute, your procedure is this, and you know take care of it that way. But so that's the thing on the zone. Any time of the shotgun. So yeah, we we, we cut out of it. Because uh, technically, in a double wing, the minute he turns and pitches the ball, uh, it's out of the zone. But by then, you'll have done the cut because you have the snap there. Right. But yeah. You, you know, you've already made contact prior to that ball being. Right. No, but I'm, but I'm, I'm the one I was talking about. It's yeah. like if you get a, a tackle and he comes right off the, uh, or you get an end and you get a real tight on the tight end and you come right off his hip and you cut the fullback. Oh, okay. Yes. That's... You know, he's technically in the zone. It's it's a it's a legit block. Because they're both in the zone. The fullback isn't though. Both fullbacks in, in the zone. Okay. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, because he's within three yards. Yeah, three yards deep. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and so I mean, going back and forth on, on that, uh, you know, and then you know, the big one I also pull out is if that's the way you want to play the rules, that's where we're going to play the rules. Uh, you know, if, if but you can talk them out of things a lot because they a lot of times they don't know. And then the biggest one, you know, is it a high school rule or is it an NFL rule? You know, there's only a five-yard bump down the field. No, there's not a five-yard bump down the field. You can hit the guy as long as you want. And a lot of it is just, you know, you got to think about from the ref standpoint is if they're used to people yelling at them and telling them they're stupid they don't know what they're doing. And if you can come at them at a, you know, nice logical way of, you know, this, a lot of times they kind of respect what you're saying and they're, they're going to hear you. And, you know, so that's, so yeah, they cut us and we cut them. That's that's another good one too on the practice if you you know if you get the bad snap as long as he can just you know catch it and put pick it back up you're still gonna get the playoff. Take the jet sweep this way, and then he just runs toss. You see a lot better on the on the end zone shot here. So yeah, he's just you're gonna see a typical. They're gonna block down, pull around. Toss the same way as the uh... <coughs> you guys ever have this problem? jump up in the air and headbutt people. Right. And I've had it for like four years in a row now. It's, they think this is like the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's like they, they, head, they want to headbutt somebody. It's like, yeah. I don't know. That hurts. Yeah, I don't know.
So now look at there's a great one too. The fullback missed his block on the toss play, but because of the jet motion, he overran outside. So like, like Coach Mullen was saying, you know, it was, it was easy on the terminology, just added the jet sweep. And we were able to, you know, nothing changes. Same blocking, same pulling, everything. How big is your offensive line? They're, they're tiny. I was going to say they look big. They're, uh, let me give you that. I mean, a drive block is great, but I mean, they're... So the left tight end is, is 180. The left tackle is 180. 175, the center's 175, the guy on the, the right tackle is, is 175, uh, the right guard, he gets to be the heavy one at 215, and then the only real big one is the big tight end kid on the outside, right there, 89, you know, he's, he's 270. <laughs> You know, six four two seventy, but everybody else. <coughs> so yeah, it allows us to to move real easy. But yeah, they we we had to practice drive blocking like a lot. And there was a lot of times they just got studded by somebody, you know. And it's like you want to get mad at the kid, but it's what are you going to do? So you're running the other way. And I want to show you this one. This is uh, running the toss wide. Essentially, turning and pitching it like SC, and everybody runs like we're run they're running uh, the the power of the toss right. Except for now, we pull the tackle on the front side. Uh, the guard, his rule, he pulled it, there was nobody on him, so if it was a 50, he pulled it, if it was a 40, he stayed. And then the, and then the quarterback. Uh, really end up working to be a great play for us this year. Really helped too that the back, he had a, they had some decent reading ability of, you know, reading the play. It wasn't like, you know, we didn't get outside all the time. Uh, but sometimes we did. But a lot of times it, it was a, the cutbacks was really the best place for us. And then the, and it's just, you know, the old SC toss play or, or the... You know, get, we're trying to get more people out in front as possible, and especially if you're really pounding them inside, and they start to, uh, you know, tighten up, you take it outside. So this actually ended up probably being our best play of the year. Actually, left worked well, better than the right did. Probably because 55 is, you know, the better of the pullers at tackle.
Do, yeah. you, do you have your pullers take a deeper step? Yeah. They on would, the sweep? Yeah. Well, he gets out there nice. No, the quarterback sometimes, because you know, he, he, he gets the plays for me on the sideline. He was running to me while the play was still running. Yeah. He was running the sideline to get the next play. I was watching him. I was watching him. Okay. <laughs> He's happy to watch. Yeah. And you'll see a lot of them. I mean, they, they've got us actually stopped dead, but we get a body on somebody. And then the running back just he finds a hole. Alright, any questions? Coach, do you have uh, any film on your le left card special? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? <coughs> Let me tell you, that, that brings up a very good one. This kid, we ran left guard special and we ran it at least once a game and most likely twice a game. It became a very big threat uh, on the play because it was a great play offset from the from the toss, and uh, when we played we played the playoff game against Twenty Nine Palms, they were actually calling for it the whole time, and, and what it did it kept these guys on the backside from pursuing. So if you're not familiar with the play, basically we just kind of run toss this way. The rules are in the center. And the tackle has to protect the left guard. He turns around. Uh, the way the rule has to, you got to read it to the ref beforehand is uh, to receive a handoff, the lineman has to be facing their own goal line and they have to uh, be a yard in the backfield. And so everybody just blocks down, protects him, he turns around, quarterback hands him the ball, and, and they all take off to the right. Uh, the key for the, the guard is he has to wait longer. Uh, if he reads that defensive end, he waits for that end to come upfield and then takes off, he's usually pretty good. Uh, if he takes off too early, he's, he's going to get seen. And the only guys that really could see him are that linebacker and the defensive tackle that might be on him. And so we block them. Uh, How does he get a yard in the back? When he spins around. Oh. You know, because the line of scrimmage is, you know, I got I got him drawn up at the top, but we're we're we're, we're deeper in the backfield too. So then he spins around, he's, he's a full yard. So he takes a hand off, crouches down, waits. Yeah. Yeah. back <laughs> stuck. But yeah, he uh, you know, and the great thing is too is this left guard ended up being. You know the the fourth leading rusher on the team. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think he rushed for like 160 yards, and he got. I'll tell you where the play really works: the two point conversion. They they don't even look at him. Uh, he never scored on it as much as he ran it. He never scored, uh, but I I've had three kids score on this play, and. You know, they, it has to be like a 20 yard you know type run, and it, it, it's a good it's a great. Uh, reward for that lineman that you, know, you really want to help out. Uh, another one is if uh, if you got a decent kid who could run, you, know, you give him the ball and it becomes another threat. This kid thought he could kick it outside all the time, so you'll see sometimes he's literally running to the sideline and he's not that fast. 
You can see it on the end zone shot a lot better. in the game, they'll, they'll sniff it out early and then I'll just wait and wait and wait and come back to it. There, and it should be no minus no yards. Like There are some times where he's got hit and he, he like, you know, he's he should basically just lean back into him and fall down and get no yards. Uh, you know, so he can take off and kind of ruin himself sometimes, you know, getting minus yards. Look at there was, you see that? See that quarterback running off the field already before the play's over? <laughs> so that, that's pretty much left guard special. Uh, you know, and you can add it to anything. We've ran it out of uh, jet sweep. We ran it out of IVAX. The only time we, we you know, we had to run it was out of shotgun. Uh, you know, I was trying to figure out ways to do it. So the years that we were shotgun, we never ran the play. Uh, yeah, you you could pitch it to him. Um, but I don't like a face like come in. Just, yeah, I, I think I think the one way I, I, I looked at it was hiking it to the blocking back and then him handing it forward. Yeah. 